Hello, and welcome to lecture four of the Human Energy Use Unit in Phys 2104. This lecture is going to be about renewable energy sources with a particular focus on solar and wind energy. Let's start with a quick survey of renewable energy sources, starting with solar. Generating electricity with solar, there are two main ways. One is photovoltaic panels. These use material properties of some materials where incoming light liberates electrons and boosts them to a higher voltage, and so they can be used to drive a current. A big advantage of photovoltaics is that they can be installed just about anywhere. The other main method is concentrated solar power. This has many forms, such as uh, parabolic dishes that focus onto pipes full of a fluid, or a tower with steerable mirrors around it that focus the light up to a collector on the tower. All of them share the feature that they are focusing light in some way onto some fluid, which is then the working fluid in a heat engine. The next source is wind. Wind power is dominated these days by horizontal axis turbines. These make the most efficient use of the available wind power, and so they're what are usually deployed in large wind farms. But vertical axis turbines still find use in various niche applications. They take up less space, and so they're easier to install in places like rooftops or near where people need to be. Next is hydropower. This is perhaps the oldest source of renewable energy that people have been making use of, and what is usually thought of when we're thinking about hydropower is big dams like the ones in these pictures, but of course there are micro hydropower generators, for example, that people can install in streams in their own backyards. The next we'll look at is geothermal power. Where it's available, geothermal power is a fabulous option. Water that's heated by deep geological processes is brought to the surface and used to run a heat engine. But this is only available in places where there are geological processes heating water up at a depth that's accessible for drilling from the surface. Often when people talk about geothermal power, they will also talk about ground source heat pumps, which can be used anywhere. Now, Technically, it's sort of debatable that this is geothermal power. The heat pump that would be used to, say, heat or, coal or cool a building using this would be run by electricity generated by some other means. It is just that the heat pump is using uh, the ground instead of the outside of the building to pump heat to or from. And this can raise efficiency because in the winter, the ground will be warmer than the outside air and in the summer, it will be cooler. Finally, I'll just briefly mention bioenergy or biofuel. This is a huge and complicated set of possibilities. We have some raw source such as wood, crops, agricultural waste, garbage, and there are many other options. This can be used to generate anything from transportation fuel, to direct heating, to generating electricity. The raw source can be burned directly for heating or to generate electricity. But more commonly these days in higher tech applications of this, either the raw source is processed to a liquid fuel through often chemical means, or dried and pelletized, and then those can be used for transportation, fuel, heating, or electricity. I have skipped over many other things. For example, I haven't mentioned the use of passive solar to heat buildings, and I've skipped over two things that are often classified as types of hydropower, tidal power, and wave power. And so I'll just leave it at that and say that there are quite a few other renewable energy sources, often with niche applications, that I haven't mentioned. One other thing that's worth pointing out is that several of these operate in basically the same way as power sources that we've already seen. Concentrated solar, geothermal, and biofuel all rely on 
using some source of energy to heat a liquid and then run a heat engine. And so they work pretty much just like fossil fuel plants that we've already seen, except that the source used to heat the fluid is not burning of a fossil fuel. Let's check your understanding based on what I just said, and you might need to look back at an earlier video to remind yourself of some things, but what is the likely maximum efficiency of currently operating CSP, geothermal, and biofuel burning power plants?